Last episode, we destroyed the natural balance of a small island, built a new railway station, and didn't build the bridge that I said I would. This time, we make our first large-scale factory in the form of a lumberyard, and still don't build that bridge from last episode. And between episodes, I've been manufacturing a whole bunch of things we're going to need for this build, including vaults, narrow gauge track, and a whole lot of tree chopping. But I think I have what I need to make a start, but we need to go wait for the train, because our actual little sort of work train thing is already over there. So the train should be here any second. So let's take a pew and head on over. And here we are, what is most likely going to be our home for the next few days. So what we're going to be building over here is, of course, a giant lumber yard. And for that, well, I think I'm going to start at the end and work my way back to the start. Because that kind of makes more sense. Because we need to make sure that everything is going to line up with the track here. Because we are going to want to pick up the wood and take it off to other places. Which means we need to bear in mind where things are going to live. So, I know for a fact that the train I've designed will have a connector at that point there. So if we put our collection vault here and stick a portable storage interface there, when we do eventually build the train and have it pull into the station, this is, in theory, where it should connect up to. But what we'll do is we'll have a few of these vaults just so we can store lots of overflow as well. And I will link them together so they filter from one into the next. But I think three vaults should be enough. So if this is going to be the end of our process, what we probably want to do is put in maybe just a belt along the front here and then we'll have collection funnels going in here and out there that basically just means things are going to go through all the vaults as they fill up so somewhere around here we'll have the drop off point for these containers and we're going to be using this narrow gauge track here so we'll just put like a small train in or something and some kind of a drop off point and then over here is where we're going to have the workshop and i've been looking at a lot of sort of lumber mills and things like that and they all seem to have a fairly open bottom and then an enclosed top so we're going to be trying to do something similar over here with the theory that this sort of narrow gauge track here can actually run through the bottom level. But let's get a platform down first so we can start trying to picture this. Well, that looks like a good size for the platform. Let's see if we can mark out a bit of a building and maybe get the actual track in. Stop everything. I've had a brain fart. So I've actually just been editing the episode so far and I've realised this is never going to work. What was I thinking? So the thing about storage interfaces is one of them can be connected to a vault, but it still needs to know what direction it's going in, which means you either need to be pulling stuff out of one of them or feeding stuff into one of them. With this setup, we're doing neither, so that's never going to work. So what I'll be better off doing is moving this forward a couple of blocks, and instead of rebuilding everything, what I'll do is just sort of move where I'm going to put the station forward a couple of blocks. And if we put a belt in front of this one here, and then use a couple of funnels, that's going to work much better for us, because now we're actually feeding stuff into this, and then it can feed into the train. I should probably go to sleep, it's getting dark. But now we've got that sorted, I can show you the progress we're making over here. So I've got a rough shape in for the building, we've got a sort of track that essentially just does a loop around around the building and I'm hoping that we can fit a vault in here that's going to store the wood coming from the actual chopping yard. But the track just goes around, slopes down on that corner. It's quite a sharp slope, but I think once we get it enclosed, it's not really going to notice. It'll be fine. And we've also got a sort of maintenance track here as well, which may well come in handy for us. So now I've got a bit of a plan for this stuff. I think before I go any further, we're going to need to sort out some power. And this particular build over here isn't actually going to need that much power. Although there's going to be lots and lots of saws running, they're all going to be running off of a gantry. And that basically means we don't really need as much power as you may think. Other than that, there's just going to be a couple of saws in here, and I think that's about it. But we're still going to build a small sort of dedicated power center, and I think we're going to put that over here somewhere. And I think somewhere about there should do nicely for the power plants. But I need to get myself some more tough. I didn't bring anywhere near enough with me. Barely even started, and I'm already excited about this place. Oh something terrible happened. So I think the best thing for me to do is to put this train back on the track and drive away from the incident. We'll put a new driver in later. Don't worry. We need to come back with a lead. Oh, and there's cats everywhere. Oh, we're totally going to have a cat driver. But yeah, that's what I get for ignoring the signals at the top end of the track. They did go down, to be fair. Anyway, incidents aside, where were we? Let's get a floor in over here. That should just about do it. So let's get a building marked out. There we go. Something around this sort of size should do, I'd imagine. And we're still not going to be getting into the steam engines just yet. Like I said, we don't need too much power for this area. So yep, we're going to be using, once again, water wheels. But you've seen me generate power with water wheels before. And we're going to do a similar style building to what we've done before as well. So I think I'm just going to crack on and get this done in a cheeky little beardy montage and then when I come back we can actually crack on with the main build for today.
And I think something like that should do the trick. We will add a few more details and things as we go on a bit later. We'll get all the paths in. But the important thing is we've got the power. And we've got plenty of space if we need to add anything else in here. The most important is that power, of course. And that comes out down here, which means we can actually feed it over where we need it. But now that that exists, we should probably try and work out the rest of this sort of transportation network, I guess. And the first thing I want to do is put a big old vault over here. And this is where we're going to store all of the woods before it sort of runs through the, uh, the the workshop here, the sawmill. So that should work nicely. My theory is we'll just be able to sort of feed all of the wood into the back of it. So we don't need to worry about that bit just now. But what we do need to work out is the train, I guess. The small train that's going to go on here. Because we need to know where the actual sort of storage interface is going to be. I imagine we're probably going to fill it from above. And then we're going to need to sort of move the wood around the inside and eventually get it into that thing. So let's build a little train down here and see what we're working with. So let's just put a station here for now. We can always move this later. Put that into build mode. So we only need a very small train here. I guess the question is, what options do we have for bogeys? I think these are the only ones that can be small. I think we'll just go for those ones. So this train needs a few things. It's going to need a vault. Going to need a portable storage interface. Seat, another block in front, and some controls on top. I think that'll pretty much do it. Doesn't need to be much, it's just a little transport train for around the yard here. So let's glue the tiny train together. Doesn't need a fancy name, we'll just call it Log Transport and the Station Log Collection. So we're going to need a portable storage interface there, which will connect with the train. Perfect. We'll have a funnel that will take everything out. So let's just put a belt in. We might need to change the length of that. And then we need to drop things onto here. So stuff's going to come out of there. We'll pick it up and put it in there. And then we'll drop it onto the belt down the bottom here. Now we just need to get all of this linked up to the power, which is all the way over here at the moment. So let's, I guess, just run something under the floor. I think that's going to be our best bet. So that's the first bit of power in. The next bit should be fairly straightforward. And that is going the correct way. Beautiful. So that system will work for emptying this and filling up the vaults. Just need to get some power over this way so we can connect up that belt as well. Perfect. And while we're here, I'm just going to quickly box in these crates as well, I think. And I think to make this all look a little bit nicer, we're just going to wrap it in the casing as well. All right, good stuff. That looks fairly tidy, I guess. And we know we need to put the collection points. How many blocks is that? One, two, three, four, five blocks above the track over on this side, which means it's going to want to go right about there. That's going to be an interesting one, which I think means the station wants to go there. Before we go any further, I just want to make sure that that's actually going to work. So we need to go grab ourselves a driver. So give that to Mr. Leafcutter Ants. And he's off. And hopefully I've got that thing in the right place. It should just connect. Nope. We need to go back one or move the station forward one. Either or. I think we'll just move that back. It's probably going to be easier. So I guess the next step is going to be working out how we're going to sort of move the items from the vault here up into this bit. And, you know, there are obviously a couple of straightforward ways. We could literally just move them straight up. Where's the fun in that? We kind of want to make use of this area here. And to be honest, I think I want to strip a portion of the logs as well. Not all of them, of course, because that would just be annoying. But I think if we pre-strip a bunch of the logs as well, that could be quite helpful. Although, with our current transport setup, maybe not. Because that's going to add another sort of seven or eight different block types. Hmm. So I guess because we haven't built up our proper storage facility, for now, what we'll do is not put them through a saw, but we'll build the area where they will go through a saw and just, just not actually put the saw in there yet. And then down the line, we can upgrade it and actually sort of, you know, make some different wooden items as we go along and when we have a big warehouse to store them in. So let's get this worked out. So we'll pull the items out of there and then we'll send them up and over because I think I want to put an exit here so we can actually get down into the wood yard. Then we'll send it over this way and back down to the floor here. And then we'll send everything over this way, maybe to somewhere around there. But I think what we want to do at some point around here, maybe, we'll split this into three belts and then this will give us some places where we can actually put saws down the line and still have normal logs going through. And that should be quite helpful if I use some brass funnels. And if we put the brass funnels across here anything that comes into here will get evenly split and come out on the three different bits here so we can sort of control how much is getting stripped and how much isn't in fact i think i'm going to add a fourth one and now i think what we want to do is try and get things up to another level i guess I mean, what would make sense is to have another vault here that's the same size as this one so that we can still keep storing stuff. So let's just quickly get some stairs in and put a second floor on. There we go. That will do for our floor. And I think to get things to go up, do we want to use fans maybe? 
Hands and shoots. Either way, we're going to need power over there. So let's just send it that way. So I've got power over to here. And if we connect it up here, we should then be able to connect up everything else. And we should just be able to do this with some encased chain drives, hopefully. Yes, look at that. Oh, and it's going the right way. Excellent stuff. Okay, so now we just need to get everything else linked up. That should be easy enough with a bunch of belts and some casings. Let's get all this enclosed as well while we're at it. There we go. That's everything linked up around here. Oh, hello. So we've got more visitors. But we don't care about them. Let's get these fans in. Although, if you're going to start shooting me, then I will care. There we go. Beautiful. How high up is it blowing those things? Oof. Not very. Okay, right. So that means we're going to need a little bit more power on these fans. So we'll just ratio the gears up like usual. Yep, it's going the right way now. And they're blowing much harder. But if we were to put in a volt across this bit here, we're going to need more volt stuff. More volts acquired. Let's get this in. So the plan here would be to have a whole bunch of chutes. And let's make them see through as well, just so we can see what's going on. And we'll continue them up to here. Let's quickly finish off the vault as well and if we put collection funnels there then in theory anything that sort of goes up those chutes should land in there then we just need one last belt in here with a funnel and then that will feed into there we just need to get some power to this thing and the easiest way for that is probably just to send it up from down here so let's just chuck a bunch of oak logs on there and test things out so they're going across they're going down there should get split into four rows Beautiful. So now what we need to do is just put some funnels here where stuff can go in. And yep, look at that. It's all going into here. Perfect. And that's all loading up into this train. Now that should drop off over here. Look at that. We see it all falling down. Goes onto these. It's going through all the vaults and ending up over here. Perfect. In fact, at the moment, I guess, it's coming out over here ready to go onto the train. Even better. So that whole bit of the system works, which is marvellous. But we've got a lot of tidying up to do in here. And we know the only other important thing that needs to go in here is actually the sort of track that's going to bring the wood in from outside. So I think we could probably get away with actually decorating this building now, trying to make it fit in a little bit better. Because, well, it's just a weird frame at the moment, and that's no good. And it's definitely going to need some light so it doesn't get blown up as well. So I guess it's time for another cheeky beardy montage. And a short while later, the building's looking a lot better. I've actually decided to spruce up the inside here. I think it works really well with the rails like this. And combined with the McCaw's bridges, we end up with some nice barriers as well. It's just really coming together for me. And from the outside, it's looking pretty good as well. We still need to sort out the terrain, of course. But the building itself, I think that definitely works. And now I think it's time to actually sort out the wood chopping side of things, which is all going to be happening out the back here. So first things first, we'll grab some shafts and some belts. And we'll just get this connected up. Up. Uh, not quite like that but instead a bit more like that and then we'll just have this going over here to a vault only needs to be a tiny one connect that up we'll eject everything from there we'll collect everything in there we'll have another small belt just like that and then we'll have the portable storage interface there and an ejector at the back now we just need to get this connected up and i'm hoping this is going to get us going the right way looks like it excellent oh no wait a minute no, nope, that is not going the right way at all. There we go. Now it's going the right way. That should go into there. A couple of chain drives. And just like that. Let's just quickly tidy this up a bit with some encasing. All right, cool. So this is where we need to build our wood chopper type thing. And I do have a plan for this. I've been messing around a little bit in creative because, well, I didn't really know what I was doing beforehand. And to be honest, I didn't want lots of spinny, spinny, circly farms. So what we're going to try and do 
is make one giant farm. So the first thing I need to do is to dig a massive trench here so we can put a gantry in. Now along this ginormous trench, we're going to run a huge gantry shaft. We're going to put a gear shift on the end of it and a clutch behind it. And if we put down a toggle latch here, we should be able to change the direction of it whenever this gets power. This is good. And if I go a little bit more basic and just put a lever there, we can turn the thing off. So now we need to build our actual drill saw type thing. So we're going to put that there. And we're actually going to need to make this a little bit wider for reasons which will become clear in just a moment. Then what we're going to do is put a redstone contact there. We can get rid of this one. And then over here, we're going to do the same thing. We're actually going to stick one to the side of our machine there. And we'll get these connected up shortly. But the idea is when this gets to each end, it's going to trigger a signal, which will trigger a redstone link, which I've forgotten to bring with me. And then that's going to change the direction on this. And that should keep the drill going backwards and forwards. What are you doing in here, Adrienne? This is not for you. Oh, coral. Oh, this is good. I need coral. Uh, right, Adrian, do not go anywhere. I've got to run all the way back to base quickly. Because if we can get coral, we can duplicate our pickles. It does occur to me I didn't even look at the rest of the stuff they had, but we just need to go get some emeralds. No, how have I got no emeralds? I'm going to do something naughty, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there you go, there's some. There's, there's some just floating around in the mountains. We're going to have to use those. Oh, there's a couple right here. This will do. And there's another one there. So that's 14 total. That's enough to buy, what, four pieces of coral? That'll do. Let's just hope the trader's still there. Oh, looks like a sheep's been hit. Got crocodile eggs as well, but yeah, we've, we've had our run in with crocodiles. We don't need any more of that. But thank you for the coral. Just threw you some additional emeralds there as well. Give me them back. Your services, however, are, uh, are no longer required. You heard. Right, where were we? I could have gone and got a redstone link while I was there, couldn't I? So let's just glue that to that first. And now let's do some more gluey things. And then we'll put some barrels down. And if we put the portable storage interface here, then that should be at the same level as that one. And while I think of it, we're actually going to want a second portable storage interface over here for getting rid of all the excess saplings. So let's just stick one here for now. And the way this is going to work is we're actually going to have rows of trees. So we're going to have a row of oak, we're going to have a row of birch, a row of cherry and so on. And this is just going to be a ginormous arm that sweeps through and chops them all down. So I think what I want to work out now is where the trees are going to go. So if we were to put oak there, for example, leave a space of three, have birch, spruce, jungle. Don't need to be gluing these. My mistake. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's fine. One, two, three. Then we're going to leave a bit of a bigger gap and then we'll just mark out a four because that's where we're going to have dark oak. And then we're going to do mangrove, but we're actually going to have five rows of mangrove because we need to kind of lay them in such a way that they don't destroy each other's saplings. But that's fine. We can figure that out. And I think that should just about cover it. But the beauty of this farm is if they ever add new trees or if I've forgotten something, which is fairly likely, let's be honest, then we can just expand it. But for now, hopefully we've got enough saws. So we actually want the saws going all the way across because occasionally leaves will grow on the bottom level, meaning that the actual saw will stop if we can't get to the log itself. So we're just going to go ham with the saws here. So we need the saws to come out that far. And we also need them on the backside as well here. So when it comes back this way, it can still chop down trees. But yeah, we need more saws. So there's a few things we need to go back for, including the actual saplings to get this farm started. So yeah, let's just go back now, grab hopefully everything we need, which is redstone links primarily, some saws and some saplings. So I'm back with hopefully all the things I need, mainly these saws. So now we've got all those in, we need to get in the deployers. So we need five over there for the mangrove. We need two for the dark oak and then we just need one for the rest. Let's make sure they're all stuck in as well. We've also got our redstone links here. So what we need to do is put one on there and then we need another one on the back of here. I know I could have just used normal redstone there, but this is so we can link the one on the other side as well. So that one is the receiver. Let's give it a unique signal of a bowl and a log. We'll do the same here just with a log and a bowl. And we need to do the same at the one on this end. So down under here, we'll just put that. We'll put a bowl and a stripped log. And we've still got a few more links to place here. So we want one on the clutch. We'll have double stripped log for that one. And then in here, we'll have double stripped log and then we'll have bowl and log. So this one will change direction. This one will actually turn the whole machine off. So with that in mind, we need a lever for this one and we need a button for this one. So we have the power one set to a lever and we have the change direction set to a button. So now in theory, if we go out here and remove the power switch down here, that should remain powered. Excellent. If we go flick this switch, hopefully that thing should start sweeping across. Or not. So I actually need to change where this receiver is. I've set that up incorrectly. So let's put that there. Put that on top. 
Give it that and set it to receive. And that should be coming back this way. But it's not. Right, well, I think I've got it worked out. It seems to be going backwards and forwards correctly. There was a rogue bit of glue down that end of the contraption that was trying to grab some grass and therefore it couldn't move. And yeah, lots of problems. But after a bit of digging, I did manage to get it figured out. And look, we're going backwards and forwards. Perfect. So now we know it's all working. What we need to do is block off spaces where stuff could be planted, specifically for the jungle, for the dark oak, and for the mangrove. So with the mangrove, what we need to be doing is planting in diagonals like this because the way mangroves grow. So if this was a mangrove sapling, it will grow roots up to five blocks, but only in cardinal directions. They don't go out diagonally. So by planting saplings like this, we're giving them space to grow out all of their roots, if that makes sense. And there's less chance we're going to be destroying saplings, potentially maybe one of the ones in front or behind. But in general, we should end up with a lot more wood without needing quite so many saplings. But either way, because we haven't actually found a mangrove forest yet we won't be putting all of our saplings in there that we got from the trader we need to sort of gradually build it up i think i mean we've got 15 saplings at the moment so we'll probably put 10 in the machine to get it started and hope that that's enough so let's just get all these non-plantable places filled in with some tough for now we can swap out some of these blocks and make it look nice a bit later for now i just want to get the farm up and running so that should work fine for the mangrove and for the dark oak what we need to do with these because they don't drop quite as many saplings as some of the other trees do we need to actually space these out a little bit. So what we're going to do is just have it so we have a space of two blocks in between each set of four saplings. And lastly, with the jungle, once again, they don't drop quite so many saplings. So just to give them a bit more breathing space, well, more leaves, basically, we're going to give them a one block gap in between each tree as well. And the rest of them should be absolutely fine, in theory. So let's get this machine loaded up, turn it on, and hope for the best. And I should put another storage interface on here too as well. And while I think of it, something else we're going to need to do is actually to make a filter so that we're only pulling the logs out of here and the good thing is we don't actually have to be in possession of the items to do the filters so we can actually just grab all the logs here drag them into the filter set that as an allow list and put that filter on there so now only logs are going to get pulled out from there. All the saplings are going to be stored on the machine for now. We will eventually sort those out as well. But I kind of want to make sure that we're getting enough coming through before I start removing any. So let's run along and set some filters. We'll have birch, spruce, oak, acacia, cherry blossom. And this one's the jungle one. These two are dark oak. And all three of these are mangrove. And specifically for the mangrove, I'm actually going to just space out a few to begin with. Just so we can make sure we get a bunch of proper yules back. But the rest of these, I should just be able to dump into this machine change the direction and it should plant everything and start harvesting us wood and doing all the things and it should all end up in the vault at the front if we've done everything correctly which we might have done but this is the only way to find out i'm going to keep some of those mangrove propagules on me just in case it all goes wrong so let's come in here let's flick the switch it would probably help if i stuck all those back on and now yeah look at that go so it's planting all of the saplings if we look over the back, we've got rows of them. Excellent. We clearly didn't have enough acacia or cherry blossom in there. And hopefully, it should now turn around and go the other way. Oh, okay, right. We need to add another stone block on the end there just so it doesn't plant those last ones. So all I need to do is actually glue on the portable storage interface that I appear to have left over there. But it looks like it's doing its thing. Let's see if it actually drops off the wood. Yes, look at that. So the wood's coming through here. Should start going up there, get split up over here, go up the tubes, and then it'll be waiting in this vault here until the train comes along. And here comes the train, so this should start loading up. Look at that, works a treat. And now if we come down here, we should see all of that get offloaded and stored into these vaults. For now, at least. I have been thinking, and I may have to change up how all this bit works over here, but for now, this will be fine. So here it comes. There goes the wood, drops down, comes across, and goes through the vaults. Amazing. And this thing will just keep on running. Now, obviously, there is the problem of the trees are only going to grow, of course, when I've got the area loaded. But it's okay. I have a bit of a solution for that, too. And that solution is the chunk loader mod. So with this, we can make a bunch of different sort of sized chunk loaders. And that should enable us to actually load up this area and keep it loaded, which means the wood will keep on coming through and so on. And then what we can actually do is set a sort of stock notification type thing. So on this vault here, or 
probably actually this one yet. Yeah, this is the one that's going to fill up last. So on this vault here, we'll check the stock level and we'll tell it to automatically turn off the farm when it reaches a certain level. And then there'll be loads of wood backed up for when we actually have all the trains set up. So the farm's working and the transport's working, but there's still something we need to do around here. And that is sort out the terrain. It doesn't look very nice around here, especially all of the sort of tough and andesite bits we've got going on over there. So it's time for me to run around, do a little bit of landscaping, put in some final details, and then we'll figure out what to do about a train. And actually, before we do any of that, we do have a name for this station now. So once again, I did actually ask you in the comments for some suggestions. And and, well, we've had some really, really good suggestions, but one in particular really did stand out. And that was Timber Holm, because a home is basically an island in the middle of a river, which, if we look at our map, is exactly what this is. And I think it's just a really nice name and should work well here. In fact, quite a few people did suggest using the word home, but Timber Holm is where we ended up settling. Now let's grab a load of stuff and make this place look nice. So I spent almost an entire day tidying things up around the logging camp. This included texturing the floor, adding some smaller details, such as log piles and an outer fence, and cracking out the schematic cannon to bring a bunch of custom spruce trees into existence. My hope was that this would help offset the wall of green with a darker shade and provide some variation from the forest I then replanted slightly further out. I also fixed the railroad turning at the far end, expanding it into a larger loop that makes more logistical sense for the trains, but then I got carried away after discovering rollers. So these things allow you to fill in the blocks under a railroad, build slopes, then replace the blocks directly underneath the rail just by riding it. So I fixed the railroad all the way back to my start space, and things are looking much better. Although having an effective railroad does cause some problems. Why do you keep doing this to us? I'd just like to clarify, that was not my fault. I mean, what kind of a horse just walks in front of a train? I mean, honestly. But now we have an empty stable again, which makes me very, very sad. So I guess next episode, we're going to be getting ourselves another horse. But I'm just over here at Beardew Valley at the moment, waiting for the flying beardsman to arrive. But, oh, in fact, here it comes now. Because we're going to take a ride down to the logging camp. I've made a lot of changes around here. I've tidied up this area of the railroad as well. And when I discovered that roller, I just, I just went on a little journey, basically. But everything's looking much nicer. I still need to sort of adjust where this train pulls in those so the carriages are actually at the platform but let's quickly hitch a ride down to the logging camp and i've made this section of track over here much much smoother the train just flows a lot better and no we still haven't done this bridge yet we'll tackle that at some point in the next couple of episodes but as we pull into the logging camp here look at this we're looking much more foresty now it's looking a lot more complete and having this extra big loop around the back here really does make things a lot easier. I've also fixed this junction here, so things should work a bit better once we get all the trains in. But if we jump into free cam mode here and have a look at the camp, I think things are looking a lot better. We've got all these wood piles scattered around. The sort of channel where the actual cutter goes is looking a lot better as well. We've got it all nicely enclosed as well, so hopefully we don't end up with mobs running around in there. And I think the addition of the pine trees here really do help to sort of offset and add a little bit of colour difference to the forest here. And the good thing is, if we ever want to expand this, we've actually got plenty of space either side we've got a whole other section over here which i may turn into a sort of a train yard i don't really know yet but i'm very pleased with how this has all come out and we've got lots and lots of wood coming in as well we will of course also be building a big old custom train over here which we'll use just for transporting the wood but before we do that, we kind of need to build the area that we're transporting the wood to. But sadly, all those plans are going to have to wait for a future episode because that's all we've got time for. I hope you have enjoyed yourselves. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now.